I now call on LSE alumnus Timothy Franklin, a Barma scholar and founder of the National School of Journalism and Public Discourse in India. He is committed to justice, truth and democracy. He has survived both big law at Allen and Overy and DLA Piper and colon cancer. He is one of two students from the LLM class of 2004 who won the World Championship for the LSE at the John H. Hopkins WTO Moot Court competition in Geneva. Baroness Shafiq and distinguished faculty members, I can think of no higher honor than to be invited back to the LSE, my alma mater and one of the finest institutions of high learning in the world. Thank you. To family and friends of the graduating class gathered here and online, this really is your moment. The success of these exceptional LSE graduates is built on the foundation of your sacrifices, of your love, support, and care. And we all applaud you. And my dear newly minted LSE graduates, 18 years ago, I was here, seated where you are now. Some of you here will be excited for the future and the doors of opportunity that have already opened for you. Others among you may feel self-doubt, trepidation in the face of an uncertain future. I felt that way. Let me assure you from personal experience that your intrinsic value as a human being can never diminish, but it grows as you endure the trials of life. In time, each of you will find the space, the people, and the opportunities to work passionately towards your purpose. My training here at the LSE helped me, eventually, to embark on an exciting career as an international capital markets lawyer. I had the opportunity to work at top global law firms, travel the world, and lead complex cross-border corporate finance transactions. And then it all came crashing down. I was 32 years old when I was diagnosed with colon cancer. I remember being a broken man sitting with my brother, then a medical trainee, letting this diagnosis sink in. The five-year survival rate of people under the age of 35 with malignant colorectal tumors larger than five centimeters is statistically, statistically insignificant. My tumor was eight centimeters. In moments like this, the soul cries out to God in desperation. At least it did for me. And I found comfort in verses of biblical scripture, comfort and strength, strength to endure this trial and strength to hope and to believe. I'm glad to report that this year, 2022, marks 10 years of being cancer free. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm delighted that my brother Joshua is now a colorectal surgeon with the NHS in Oxford, and he's here with us this evening. <laughs> These years of added time have made many things possible. Playing first division cricket in Hong Kong, forming an alternative rock band, leading the business development efforts of the law firm Tatva Legal, and feeling the wonder and joy of seeing my children grow. But more importantly, this added time has made it possible to find a higher purpose, to raise generations of young people committed to truth, justice, and democracy. And to this end, my life's work has been dedicated to establishing 
NSOJ, the National School of Journalism and Public Discourse in Bangalore, India. The LSC was an early catalyst in discovering my purpose. I recall intense deliberations with Professor Francis Snyder on global distributive justice claims. And I will never forget long hours of dialectics on democracy at Carr Saunders Hall with Renata Gomez, my teammate for the John H. Jackson WTO moot court. I also remember participating in the protests against the war in Iraq that bookmarked our time here at the LSE. These were conversations and experiences that shaped my pursuit of a higher calling and purpose. There's a lesson here for all of us. Cherish the relationships and experiences gained during your time at LSE. The LSE community is your safe space. We may come from different countries and have different backstories, but I'm convinced that we stand on common ground on the biggest issues of our time. Perhaps we share a common commitment to liberal democracy. Maybe we'll suspend that for until the World Cup concludes. But I'm convinced that we stand on common ground, even if the sub-attributes of democracy are in decline globally. Perhaps we share a common commitment to inclusive capitalism if we cannot all agree on the virtues of socialism. And perhaps we share a common commitment to work towards a more sustainable and equitable world. But standing on common ground is only a first step. For us to make a meaningful impact, we need to invest our time in building up coalitions of people and institutions that share our values. The NSOJ's mission is possible because of our partnership with people and organizations that share our values, organizations like the Constructive Institute in Denmark and the Alternative Law Forum have helped us work towards a less polarized and hateful society. The Obama Foundation, Columbia University, and the LSC have generously opened up their networks to us as we reimagine the future of democracy in the digital realm. In this amazing Peacock Theater, we are gathered together as present and future lawyers, lawmakers, researchers, data scientists, scholars, public policy experts, civil society leaders, and social scientists. There's work to be done by each one of us. Not just any work, but important work that will require us to build coalitions of people and institutions for a higher purpose, to secure the future of our world. I'm going to give you something to think about this evening. And this is a question that troubles me every day. With all the privilege, opportunities, and resources that you have, are you achieving a higher calling and purpose than merely providing for you and your family? It was a similar question perhaps, that perhaps troubled a lawyer by the name of Henry Hunt Hutchinson, who bequeathed 20,000 pounds to put towards the Fabian Society's purpose of advancing the principles of social democracy. 20,000 pounds that funded the establishment of the LSC in 1895. So ask yourself, are you achieving a higher calling and purpose? You may or may not need added time, but go on, find your purpose. Surround yourself with people who will share, challenge, and sharpen your purpose. And remember that you are of great intrinsic value. And finally, dear class of 2022, be grateful for the gift of life. Use it well. Go out into the world and be the superheroes that you are designed to be.
Thank you, Mr. Franklin. I now call on all the graduates to rise for the official conferment of degrees. So this is the moment you've all been waiting for. And let me start by saying what an incredible honor it's been to be with you here this evening to celebrate with all of your loved ones in this place. This is the moment when the departments have recommended you and your degrees are actually conferred. So by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Academic Board of the London School of Economics and Political Science, I now admit you to the awards to, for which you've been recommended. And on behalf of the council and the faculty and the staff and the entire LSE community, let me say how proud we are of each and every one of you. Congratulations, LSE graduates. may be seated. I hope that you're going to spend not just today, but many days, perhaps weeks or months, celebrating your achievements. But let's start with today, and I hope you enjoy the receptions being held around campus with you and your family. Let me just reiterate again, many, many congratulations. You've done a huge amount of work, and we're here to celebrate the dedication and commitment and achievement that you, have all, that you have all achieved. So thank you again very much. Congratulations to all of those who are here and joining the graduates. And I'll ask you to just remain in your seats until the platform party descends. Congratulations again, thank you. I now declare this ceremony closed. Thank you. <laughs>